Welcome everyone to for IP Council's webinar, CRISPR processes patents in green biotechnology, the benefits of patent pools and clearing houses. My name is Axel Frazzini. I'm the managing director of for IP Council and I will be your host today. As you may know, for IP Council is a not-for-profit research organization focused on the link between IP and innovation. To identify the most relevant topics and produce empirical research, we work closely with a wide variety of academics, experts, IP organizations, and stakeholders. On our website, you can find a wide range of free materials, studies, guidelines, summaries of relevant papers, and recordings of our webinars, like this one, like this one today that we are recording. Moreover, we produce easy to digest content, especially tailored for non-IP experts, SMEs and startups. This is free of charge too. Some examples are interactive graphics and interviews to inspire you to innovate. With this, we aim to assist innovative startups and SMEs to learn how to use IP to grow their businesses. As you may know, more and more things are increasingly connected thanks to the Internet of Things. To achieve this, standardized technologies are needed, often protected by patents. This is why we have created a case law area with summaries of court cases regarding standard essential patents. This section is now also available in Chinese and in Japanese. A dedicated section in Japanese and Chinese are also available. But without further delay, I would like to introduce Dr. Agnes Rikrock as today's speaker. Dr. Agnes Rikrock holds a PhD in plant science and obtained an HDR, the ability to conduct research from Paris-Saclay University from France in genetic resources and plant breeding. She's a senior lecturer at AgroParisTech in Paris and adjunct professor at the Passy Pennsylvania State University College of Agricultural Sciences. She teaches biotechnology and bioethics since 2016. You can find her impressive full biography on the 4IP Council website in the contributors section. A final remark for the audience please do not hesitate to use the Q&A tool to submit your live questions during the presentation. And we will take all the questions right after the presentation. So it means that you can raise your questions anytime and uh, make sure that your questions are posted um, and we will address them. But Agnes, without further delay, the floor is all yours. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Axel. So, uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be with you to talk about uh, CRISPR processes, uh, patents in green uh, uh, biotechnology. So, um, uh, CRISPR Cas based uh, technique is a revolutionary one, and uh, it has been very successful. Uh, with public and uh, private uh, researchers and uh, readers uh, since uh, uh, 10 years now. Um, uh, this tool is not very expensive. Um, the, it's a precise uh, mutagenesis uh, using uh, nuclease and uh, is quick to implement. So it means that a lot of people uh, in the developed uh, countries or in new, new developing countries can use it. So this is why there are so many uh, patents and this is the reasons we would like to, uh, uh, to see uh, how to solve this uh, problem to identify the right uh, pattern in the forest of patents using CRISPR. Um, Nevertheless, uh, CRISPR technology is still e uh, evolving and the list on a new genomic technique, it's, it's a name 
for this category of techniques by uh, the European uh, Union a year ago is, um, is still evolving and this is expected to expand uh, further in the coming years with uh, new tools like uh, base uh, editing. But we will come back to this uh, new tools in a few uh, slides. So um, there is a lot of benefits of strong patenting. Uh, a strong patent system is necessary to enable innovation huh, by incentivizing investments uh, in, um, in research and uh, in development and uh, promoting the dissemination of knowledge, including through licensing, uh, as this is considered vital for the development and commercialization of uh, new products. And um, there is um, more than 11,000 CRISPR-related patent applications worldwide, uh, which have already been uh, filled, with the majority uh, being filled uh, in the US and uh, China. Um, we can say that almost 33% uh, of these CRISPR patents are all by private companies. And the 66% the approximately uh, are all by a uh, researcher from um, the public sector, in particular uh, by the Chinese Academy of Sciences. So uh, perhaps you know there is a um, legal dispute uh, between the uh, CRISPR technology inventor uh, and you see uh, Berkeley with Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel uh, Parmentier in one hand and at the Broad Institute MIT uh, um, at Harvard in the US uh, by Feng Zhang. And this pro attracted legal battles uh, surrounding uh, these CRISPR patents have created uh, uncertainty as to the final uh, determination of ownership and patentability. So the proliferation of patents on CRISPR in such complex landscapes and this legal dispute, which is not uh, over, uh, could be barriers to innovation. So we will see together uh, what could be the solution. Okay. Um, now, private companies uh, also have the option uh, avoiding these key patents, uh, which belong to UC Berkeley or the Broad Institute in Harvard, uh, altogether by using CRISPR um, different uh, systems. Um, they are named uh, alternative enzymes, such as uh, CAS12A, CAS13 or CAS14, and also base editor. This alternative enzyme of CAS9 uh, are more and more uh, developed by the private companies and also by the uh, public sector. There is a necessary to facilitate uh, freedom to operate. So what is it? Uh, freedom to operate analysis uh, is needed in any case. Uh, if this is a clearance infringement search. And uh, the goal is to clarify if a product or its potential commercialization infringe on other existing uh, intellectual property rights. So it is important uh, to have this analysis uh, before to deposit uh, a patent. So it's um, an expensive undertaking and is uh, quite time consuming and complex. Um, there is some difficulties in patenting. Uh, 
uh, especially uh, for small and uh, medium-sized uh, enterprises. Some member states in the European Union and stakeholders uh, have expressed uh, concern in different uh, studies which were uh, released uh, last year in September uh, 2021 about um, patenting and accessing patented uh, new genomic techniques. So uh, the need for market exclusivity and the interest of patent uh, holders are the two causes of high transaction costs. So uh, the first uh, cause is uh, the high cost of research and development, uh, the outcome of which the potential economic gains and the potential value of any downstream product is quite uncertain. So the high cost of research and development and the regulatory approval required for new products before they can be brought to market, especially in Europe compared uh, to the US, licenses generally need uh, some market exclusivity in order to return a profit. The second uh, cause uh, is uh, high licensing fees, which uh, can occur in the biotechnology sector due to the over-evaluation of the intellectual uh, uh, protection rights. Key patent owners who overvalue the discovery force downstream uh, licenses to pay more in licensing fees on a product or on a technique or on discovery. That is not guaranteed to be commercially successful. So um, there is solution in terms of collaborative licensing models. And uh, I would like to, uh, to present you the patent pool. So uh, with respect to intellectual property and patent protection, alternative uh, models could overcome the difficulties uh, caused by the complex patent landscape and um, you know, the high cost uh, to develop a, a patent. So the possibility of identif identifying patents in, in this uh, forest, uh, in this profusion of, uh, of patents, could avoid uh, economic and welfare losses by accelerating technological progress in the development of solution. So uh, one part of this, um, of this solution, is a one-stop shop um, so a patent pool that leads to a one-stop licensing point or shop could allow for cross licensing and facilitate uh, facilitate the freedom to operate so with um, a single licensing uh, package any potential uh, licensee we have the ability to use the technology platform. So when access and use to a certain technology are underweight by the existence of multiple uh, patents, a patent pool is very useful because it could be a model to facilitate, uh, facilitate the access and reduce uh, potential litigation risk. Uh, lit litigation can be solved. Um, we can mention that there is some uh, patent pool. Uh, we cannot uh, solve uh, litigation. They, they, they don't worry about that, but some uh, can do that. So it depends. Um, for instance, a community search uh, pool can reduce the number of negotiation, which uh, is very time consuming when there is a patent profusion of patents for which the identity of the holder will become difficult. Since the increase in patent litigation, licenses have begun to perform uh, a freedom to operate analysis. 
and a pool, uh, patent pool, can reduce this cost because um, its uh, directors, uh, uh, lawyers, but also uh, um, scientists, must perform this analysis um, to determine uh, the key and the specific nature of the included patents. So a successful transaction uh, conceived through a patent pool can reduce cost for all parties involved on a scale of hundreds of millions of dollars or euros. So it's a, it's a lot of money. So a part of the solution also uh, in a patent uh, pool is a non-exclusive licensing. So the package of the intellectual uh, property rights uh, is licensed on a non-exclusive basis, um, allowing licenses to benefit from uh, affordability and freedom to operate, uh, while providing a licensor with adequate uh, royalties. Um, non-exclusive licensing schemes could allow many uh, private companies and also uh, the public sector, of course, to enter the market and uh, which create a kind of commercial uh, ecosystem that has transcended innovation and the economy. So well, the patent pool must be open to all uh, IPR uh, orders, but each patent must be analyzed individually to determine it is needed before possible inclusion. That's very important. Um, so the patent pool administrator, so there is some example, huh, uh, uh, such as uh, MPEGLA, we would like to launch uh, uh, a platform uh, uh, dedicated to, uh, to CRISPR. It was not already uh, uh, launched because of the legal dispute between UC Berkeley and, uh, and the MIT, uh, Institute and Award. Um, these administrators use independent experts, uh, which are uh, high level scientists, uh, lawyers, um, and they analyze both the patent landscape and the potential uh, key patent. So, um, what we can say uh, in the absence of a patent pool, uh, users as you can see in the, in the figure uh, on your left, um, have to enter into negotiations which all relevant patent holders, which is time consuming and expensive uh, process. In, uh, in the presence of patent pool, as you can see, licenses turn to the patent pool in the cycle, um, for the white as one package, which results in simplification and a significant, uh, significant uh, reduction of transaction uh, cost. So there is another uh, solution in terms of collaborative licenses model very close to a patent uh, pool so with uh, overlapping uh, uh, criterion. Uh, a clearinghouse is a, is a platform uh, as a patent pool, uh, which may provide information uh, and on patent technologies, uh, bring together potential uh, providers, a licensor, and users, the licensees of patent and technologies, and, um, and provide additional services like negotiating uh, licensing condition, collecting and distributing YIT, like in a in patent. So in the absence of uh, clearinghouse uh, licenses uh, must enter into negotiation with all patent holders. It's time consuming, it's very expensive. And um, in the presence of a clearinghouse, licenses turn to the patent pool, you know, in, uh, in yellow, for acquisition of pro carrier rights. So 
to give you an example, uh, the agricultural crop licensing platform uh, based um, in Brussels, in, uh, in, in Belgium, um, is um, this is a clearinghouse uh, which can be mentioned as a solution. Uh, sorry, uh, my the slide is going too fast. I should go back. Okay. Um, so this is a clearinghouse ACLP and um, can be mentioned as a solution for products produced uh, by the CRISPR technology for the plant breeding uh, in the agricultural sector uh, in Europe. Uh, there are still 10 uh, companies which are uh, very interesting to, uh, to launch uh, this, uh, this platform. It was not already uh, uh, launched, probably because for the same reason of the legal uh, dispute, um, perhaps. So uh, we will see what are the condition of success and acceptability by the society uh, in large, uh, by the, uh, the, the stakeholders um, and by the companies and, uh, and by the users also. So um, we need to specify who and what uh, intellectual property rights are uh, contained in the pool. Without clarity on who and what uh, IPR are contained in the pools, the ability of creating a uh, one-stop licensing point for a new genomic technique technology will remain uncertain. So uh, because there is a so much profusion of uh, CRISPR uh, patents and uh, with uh, new tools, uh, with a new CAS protein, a one-stop licensing point uh, is very uh, useful. So this clarity is very needed. There is also a need to include all key uh, patents and specific patents. So I will give you some details between uh, key versus specific patents. It means essential patents, fundamental patents, and specific uh, patents for a specific modification in the gene. So there is a need to increase patent quality. Why? Because the end uh, product, the, the tray in the, in the crop, for example, the, the resistance to the drought, uh, uh, the, the content in a, in a vitamin C, for example, should be precisely uh, defined for the definition of a key or a specific patent. And uh, so uh, the success is, is the uh, alleviation of litigation concerns. And um, a true uh, one-stop licensing uh, uh, shop or point allow cross licensing and is easy uh, to use. So um, uh, key patents are those for which the application is general, such as a, a technique uh, that applies to all genomes, uh, so the general research tool such as uh, CRISPR-Cas9. Um, and there is a, a need and a, and a concern to make patented research tool as broadly available as possible. I will come back to, to, this, uh, uh, to this condition. And um, we need to, to have an open licensing system for these key patents. Uh, this technology to be shared by uh, a lot of people. And the more we have people, uh, the best innovation uh, we'll get at the end. Regarding specific patterns, uh, they are those for which the application is specific uh, for a given tray, for example, uh, drought resistance, and uh, due to the climate change, and for a given specials uh, for uh, per millet, for example. So 
but we need uh, to define uh, a kind of model. It's not a standard, it's kind of model. The platform pool, could we create broad target agnostic patterns? That means they do not require uh, a specific genome uh, for better access to plant genetic resources. It means that patterns uh, uh, can be uh, used for every plant. Uh, and also for orphan crops and uh, under uh, utilized uh, crops. For example, for uh, some African crops. And um, the model uh, has been defined as a reference uh, model by a, a platform uh, which was devoted to uh, electronics, MPEGLA. And this platform would like to launch uh, a, a patent pool uh, of CRISPR technology. And um, because the platform could change due to advancements in technology, uh, with a difference uh, um, um, enzymes, or perhaps with uh, with base and um, base editors, the platform created the reference model so that the pool scope can be expanded or uh, altered. So it's moving with uh, the progress of the of of research of fundamental research. So. The platform uh, plans to include key and specific uh, intellectual property rights. And based on the reference model, uh, the CRISPR pool is built to contain only broad target agnostic uh, patterns. So by including uh, fundamental target agnostic patterns, the platform will create a single licensing um, package so that any potential licensee will have the ability to use the technology uh, platform. And then they can use their own specific uh, 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 patterns. Uh, however, the reference models also prevails uh, the biotech industry need for exclusivity through target specific uh, patterns. That are not included in the scope of the pool. So uh, this uh, subcategory of exclusive uh, licenses gives uh, developers, uh, breeders, or researchers the commercial leverage needed to encourage uh, funding and development of new products, uh, while still participating uh, in the fundamental CRISPR pattern pool. Uh, using the pool uh, license as a research pool. So there is two, two levels. So these developers could get a license from a pool community member from one person on an independent basis for specific genes or specific uh, application. So uh, it's not a broad uh, application, it's very precise. And uh, for uh, for a given species or for a given function of, of the tree, for example. So um, what about the public sector? So from a, an economic perspective, uh, the public uh, sector plays an important major role in fundamental research huh? and, uh, and is a substantial source of intellectual property in green biotechnology in developing a research tool. Huh? And to uh, and to identify also uh, the key genes in a, in a major trace for sustainable development of, of plants in agriculture. Uh, thus, fundamental CRISPR patterns, uh, such as patterns covering research tools, uh, developed with public funds by universities uh, operating in the public interest and enabling a broad round of downstream research should be licensed and disseminated as widely as possible 
while addressing uh, ethical concerns about particular uh, CRISPR uh, application. So we'll come back to, to, to A6 in, a, in the next slide. But uh, I would like to mention that um, 11 universities uh, wrote a, a report uh, uh, 27 uh, in America, and uh, it was named the nine points. And point five states that university should make patent research tool as broadly available as possible. So the nine points report uh, was written to consider in licensing university uh, technology. So A6 uh, concern uh, various uh, points. The first one is uh, the need to uh, a non-exclusive license agreement. In the biotech, uh, the green biotech field, it has been shown that a non-exclusive licensing system have allowed many companies to enter uh, the market, uh, perhaps uh, small and medium uh, size uh, companies, uh, creating a commercial ecosystem uh, that's very good for innovation and the economy. Uh, the second um, ethical uh, point is the prohibition of uh, patenting a native sequence. Um, there is a prohibition uh, to patent a random mutation, which, which has appeared uh, by change in the genome. You can patent uh, a mutation uh, you have uh, already um, created, but not a random one. Um, the second uh, uh, ethical uh, point after na native uh, sequence is um, the prohibition uh, to patent any technique uh, which allow uh, germination restriction uh, to avoid the, the so-called uh, terminator uh, system. Uh, where seeds uh, cannot germinate uh, without um, uh, a mixture of enzyme uh, provided by, by, by the company uh, which is selling the, the seeds. And uh, the last prohibition is the prohibition of patents on tobacco for uh, human use. So it's just example. Huh? Uh, the list can be uh, of course, be be more uh, long. So, what about the number of deposits? Is it a, a minimum number? It's very difficult to say uh, to give to give a value, but it's necessary to get the support from several important and all key player in uh, in plant breeding. A CRISPR patent pool depends on the willingness of a sufficient number of uh, intellectual property owners to join the pool to ease licensing burdens and costs. Uh, thus, a major company is needed. The platform will take off uh, in a big way, a successful way, when a major company uh, announced that it will uh, join the, 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 the patent pool. Um, in Europe, um, the European uh, study, uh, which was launched uh, in uh, April uh, 2021, Acknowledge the benefits of patents and licensing in promoting uh, innovation and the development of new genomic techniques and their products. So the European um, Community uh, published in, a year ago in September uh, 2021 a one map to establish a new legal framework for plants uh, obtained by uh, these uh, NGTs, target mutagenesis, seed uh, genesis, and for their food and feed products. So it is based on this uh, uh, study. 
under Union law, particularly in the light of the apparent court of justice uh, ruling in case uh, C528-16, uh, 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 which means that uh, all techniques uh, after uh, 21 um, are classified as transgenesis and uh, all produced made by these uh, techniques, such as targeted uh, mutagenesis, uh, are classified as GMOs in Europe. It's not the same uh, in other country or in, in the US. So um, the aim is to enable innovation in the agri-food system uh, while maintaining a high level of protection for human and uh, animal uh, health and uh, welfare and the environment to contribute to the European Green Deal and the farm to fork strategy and uh, together with the uh, uh, biodiversity strategy and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for a more resilient and sustainable uh, agri-food uh, system. So, so Europe uh, acknowledges the benefits of patents and uh, licensing. So that's uh, that, um, an important point. Uh, private companies and uh, agribusiness uh, with um, small and uh, medium-sized enterprise uh, see also the benefits uh, of a strong patent protection for uh, this new genomic technique and uh, products as a prerequisite for innovation to the high cost of research and development. So it should have a, a return uh, for benefits. So in, uh, in conclusion, um, when uh, access and use to a certain technology uh, such as CRISPR are uh, endured by the existence of uh, profusion uh, of patents, a patent pool could be use, a useful model to facilitate access and uh, reduce uh, potential litigation risk. Uh, the package of uh, IPRs, uh, I licenses on a non-exclusive uh, basis, allowing uh, licenses to benefits from uh, affordability and freedom to, to operate while providing a licensor with adequate royalties, which is not uh, time consuming. The platform should be a uh, low complexity platform uh, that lawyers and uh, breeders, scientists uh, are familiar and uh, comfortable uh, with. So, uh, I would like to, um, to thank you uh, very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Agnes. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, because we received many questions, you will have access to the slides uh, when the video uh, will be made available tomorrow on the 4IP Council website. But let's start with a few basic questions that we have received. Yes. Um, so first one is, uh, what are the NGTs of green biotechnology? So uh, the, the most um, uh, prominent set is based on, uh, on CRISPR-Cas uh, direct uh, nuclease uh, technology, uh, which introduce, um, uh, you know, a mutation uh, or insertion uh, or deletion or substitution in a target uh, a sequence uh, which control a, a trait. So it's uh, one, one sequence, one trait at the moment. Uh, however, um, a few dozens uh, of uh, plants um, can be um, successfully uh, transforms uh, by this uh, technology. So there is a need to, to improve the transformation of the, of the plant. Uh, we have uh, more than uh, 370,000 uh, higher plants uh, worldwide, and a few dozen can be uh, transformed. So there is a big effort 
to uh, to make this uh, transformation. But the this um, CRISPR Cas and the Talen and the zinc finger uh, nucleus, which are also uh, uh, precise endonucleus, can make this uh, this mutation uh, precisely in the gene. Okay, thank you. Um, have companies now also the option of avoiding these key patents? I think you, you talked about this, the, the key patents from UC Berkeley and the Broad Institute and Harvard all together by using different CRISPR systems. Um, yes, uh, I think so because um, I present some, uh, some new uh, enzyme alternative uh, enzymes uh, which are well uh, developed. Um, they are also the system of uh, base editing, so to, to transform a, a base to another one. Um, and um, there is also the, the prime editing, uh, which, which can make um, uh, a, a great efficiency to, uh, to make, um, to make a uh, modification. So um, there is uh, more and more um, development uh, of prime editing and uh, base editing um, in strawberry, uh, in tomato, uh, in, in different uh, uh, crops. So um, this, this company, uh, have now the option of uh, of avoiding the, the Cas9 uh, uh, key patent. Yes. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Um, what does the CRISPR global patent landscape look like today? Ah, uh, so um, there is a difference between uh, Europe. And, uh, and America uh, between the uh, European Patent Office and uh, the US uh, Patent Trade uh, uh, Office. So uh, in America, um, the USPTO, the Organization of, of Patent in America, has ruled in favor of the Broad Institute, uh, the Fang Zhang, uh, 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 di 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 discover researcher on uh, in uh, on February uh, 28 uh, this year, and uh, so they they said that uh, Feng Zhang, the Broad Institute, is the first inventor. It's not the same situation uh, in Europe uh, because uh, UC Berkeley uh, is considered so Jennifer Doudna and uh, Emmanuel Charpentier, the, the Nobel. Uh, 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 price um, uh, were considered the UC, UC Berkeley uh, as the first to uh, to inventor by the European uh, Patent uh, Office. So uh, this is um, the, the complexity of the of the landscape because there are there is also uh, surrogate companies from these two main um, uh, institute, and uh, there is a lot of um, Chinese researcher from the Academy of Sciences, uh, and this uh, Chinese researcher uh, have a lot of patents. So when a Chinese researcher writes, um, publish a paper, um, there is a patent deposit. So there is a kind of course between the US and, uh, and the Chinese and the Europe is in, a, in the third place, but uh, far from uh, the US and, uh, and China. So this is, uh, this is uh, the, the landscape uh, at the moment. I cannot hear you. Ah. Sorry. So you um, used the, the words surrogate at one point, and the oh, question okay. is related to this. Why you rethink the we, surrogate licensing model? Yes, be, because it, um, 
you know, the, the, the surrogate licensing model um, uh, allows uh, a, comp a complex uh, landscape. Um, so um, uh, there is a kind of a, a research um, a bottleneck with CanoCube because exclusive licensing um, uh, to surrogates uh, limits the availability of the CRISPR technology. So, um, so if there are uh, too much surrogates, uh, it's very difficult uh, uh, to, 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 to get um, a technology um, uh, available for everybody. And um, there is uh, exclusive licensing between the surrogate and other company. And um, so uh, it means that um, uh, public researcher uh, should uh, patent the uh, research tool, for example, fundamental uh, research tool, um, and to make them uh, available for everybody. But if they have a surrogate company, um, this uh, wide uh, freedom to, uh, to use um, the WeJust tool is, uh, is very restricted. So um, is the reason that some stakeholders uh, have concern about the, the surrogate licensing model and to Ask to um, to rethink it. Okay, um, just uh, as a follow up question that we received, uh, because several times you talked about developing countries, mm -hmm. and uh, you just you just talked about more like the, uh, the North America, Europe, and Chinese. But what about the CRISPR patents? status in the developing geographies such as India, Africa, and South America? Right. Alors, uh, in Africa, uh, there is some patents in Morocco and um, in, South, uh, in South Africa, and uh, made by a major company, uh, but they would like to, to patent some, um, uh, some trace for specific uh, plants in this uh, country, uh, Morocco and uh, South Africa. Um, in, uh, there is some, uh, some pattern in, uh, in Japan, uh, in, in Korea uh, also, in Arabi, uh, in Saudi, because there is a big university there, uh, but not so much in, uh, in South uh, America. Uh, probably because um, there is this, this uh, dispute which is not over, and uh, perhaps also because um, uh, the, uh, the application uh, using um, CRISPR-Cas9 needs more time, uh, um, and uh, perhaps it's not a, a mature uh, ecosystem for this country uh, to patent. But I think it, it, it will come. Okay. Uh, there was also a question uh, trying to follow up uh, because you mentioned the need to prohibit patents on native sequences. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, could you please expand mm -hmm. on how this can be achieved in practice? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's an important point uh, because with, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, woman uh, cancer, uh, there is a company uh, uh, which uh, patents some uh, genes uh, which provide cancer, uh, breast cancer, uh, breast cancer one and uh, breast cancer two genes. And uh, the Supreme Court of uh, Justice in, um, in America uh, said that we cannot uh, patent a native sequence. Uh, you, you, you cannot patent a sequence because you can cut uh, the DNA or gene and to say I cut and I see uh, there is a link with, uh, with the cancer or with uh, the resistance to, uh, to an insect to, for, for a plant. 
um, because it's, uh, you, you cannot patent the nature, you know. What you could patent, and it's the, is the definition of a patent, is the creativity of the researcher. So if the researcher made a modification in a gene, uh, which provide a new trait, uh, a very improvement in, a, in whatever, uh, it can be yield, it can be uh, uh, resistant to high temperature. There is a creativity. And, and we need to pay this, this creativity. So uh, a native sequence, there is no creativity except to cut the, the, the DNA. OK, I better understand that. Um, now, trying to go back to patent pools and licensing platform. Uh, so you explain the financial reasons to join a pool, uh, but um, besides royalties, what are really the financial reasons to join a pool? Uh, to, to to join a pool is to uh, is to be sure uh, that you um, uh, you have um, uh, you can um, obtain uh, patents on a non-exclusive uh, basis. So you could uh, use every pattern uh, in the pool without paying royalty to each of others. So um, in, a, you know, uh, in this kind of, of, uh, of shop, uh, you, you could uh, choose the pattern uh, you want, and you are sure that this uh, patent uh, was identified previously by a freedom to operate analysis. So you are sure that you can use this, uh, this patent uh, for further uh, research. And uh, you have the possibility to choose among a lot of patterns. So uh, for a small and uh, medium enterprises, or even for major companies, it's very um, easy to use and uh, is not time consuming. And at the same time, uh, if you want to uh, uh, to use a, a pattern with a restricted uh, application, you can do that, and you can have a transaction, um, a particular transaction with uh, with the order. So, um, because because DNA is very is very long, uh, with a lot of genes, and we uh, we think in the next uh, decades uh, a lot of um, hopefully. Uh, a lot of uh, genetic modification uh, will uh, emerge and um, with the new techniques, it, it will be very difficult to, to be sure that your uh, uh, sequence you have modified were, were, was not done by another uh, researcher, for example. And okay. also, um, just to, to add something, and um, also for the agnostic uh, uh, patent, you can use one for uh, for different crops. So it's uh, you know um, a gain of time also. Okay. So at one point in your presentation, you, you talked about MPEG-LA as well as SCLP. And I'm going up in the questions. I see people are asking, but what is the agricultural crop licensing platform, the SCLP? It seems to be new and um, they cannot find too many information about it. Will you be able to, to expand a little bit? Yes, Alors, uh, the um, agricultural crop um, li uh, licensing platform is, uh, is located in, uh, in Brussels. Uh, there is 38 member states um, uh, of the European Patent uh, Office, along with Russia and uh, Ukraine. And um, 
and there are uh, 10 European uh, major company, um, plant breeding company, which are involved uh, in the initiative. So this initiative is, uh, is to have, uh, to, to, to provide a, a transparent uh, access uh, to, uh, to patented uh, trades, like in a, in a patent pool. And um, so uh, this initiative uh, provides information for each patent trait and, um, and, they, um, and, and they give the, um, the information and, uh, and all uh, rights and they do uh, a freedom to operate analysis for uh, uh, each patent uh, uh, which could be included in the um, uh, uh, a, a CLP. Um, this platform uh, would be launched uh, um, perhaps uh, in the course of the year uh, by 2022. 20, uh, um, but perhaps um, uh, the delay of the launch is, is due to the dispute, perhaps. Okay. But so we don't know why it is delayed. We don't know yet. No, no, no. no. Okay. Okay, but I see that's fine because um, it was, um, you talked about the clearing houses. We received many questions about this, but I don't think that we have the time to cover this. Mm -hmm. uh, people are also ask questions regarding the MPGLA CRISPR pool, mm -hmm. but I don't think we have the time to cover this. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we are going to display the slide to announce the, the, next, um, the next webinar. But uh, I see that time is, is running quite fast and uh, we, we would have been able to, to continue for uh, maybe hours. That's a, a topic that is attracting a lot of attention at the moment. But I would like to thank you very much, Agnes, for sharing your knowledge and your expertise. This has been very useful, at least for me, and I hope that it will have been the same for the attendees. And I would like to thank all the attendees as well for attending this webinar, asking questions. And you know what? If you have any other questions, you can send them directly to the FIP Council website. Uh, later today, you will receive an email inviting you to complete a one-minute survey about this webinar. So that's your chance to express your opinion and to provide your feedback. And as explained before, a recording of this presentation will be made available on the 4IP Council website tomorrow. And I would like to announce uh, the upcoming webinar. So to make sure that you don't miss any webinar, you should subscribe to our newsletter. And on the 19th of October, we are delivering a webinar with Ms. Paola Dabico and Dr. Claudia Tapia called IP or not IP during COVID times compulsory licensing, IP waivers, and other initiatives. I suppose that should be a great webinar that's timely, and you can register directly uh, using the link on your, on your screen or the QR code. Meanwhile, I would like to thank you again, all of you for attending, and now it's time to say goodbye. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>